So far, we have considered only one reference vector. In particular, in the online learning rule, we have updated just one reference vector. So there's a unique assignment from each data vector to the reference vectors. There's a variant of this algorithm um, that actually moves several reference vectors around simultaneously, and that's called uh, referred to as soft competitive learning. Uh, so far, the previous online learning, learning rule was referred to as as hard competitive learning, and this hard competitive refer, refers to the fact uh, to the to the fact that only one reference vector is modified at any given time, and only one reference vector is responsible for a data point. So now in soft competitive learning, you have something like you have a few, you have your data points, yeah. And your <laughs> let's say three reference vectors, and no, they're posi positioned already quite nicely, right? So that's maybe not helpful. <coughs> So let me draw more points. To the right. So we assume here that we start with an unfavorable placing placement of the reference vectors which are all in one corner. And you can imagine if now one of these here to the right <coughs> if this reference vector uh, data vector gets activated obviously this is the winner. <coughs> Excuse me. And you would move this winner towards this uh, data point. And in soft competitive learning, the idea is that you not only move the winner, but you also move the, the others to some extent. So what we would do is we would move this, oops, this re reference vector, let's say, by one third towards that data point here, yeah. Uh, but the others are also moved towards that data point to some extent, right? So maybe here and here. Or actually to so this would be if if the two neighbors would also be moved by a third, but that's uh, will in the end lead to a situation where all the reference points are at the same location. So what you rather do is you move them to a lesser extent. So maybe let's say only by 10% towards the data point. No? And therefore you, so I, I guess this has sort of two um, advantages. The one is you move whole groups of neurons uh, of reference vectors initially, so you just make more changes in the beginning, and uh, this might also help the system to move out of local optima. So, <coughs> so we have this again: initialize the reference vectors, pick a data vector at random, and then determine the nearest reference vector, the second nearest, etc. And then move the reference vectors a little bit towards the data vector, depending on the rank of the list. The rank in the list of reference vectors. Yeah. <coughs> and this is indicated by this equation. And often the neighborhood uh, is uh, reduced over time. And then, of course, repeat. <coughs> okay, so this is a variant, and we will see this in a in a demo later. Yeah, I'm not going to explain in any detail to uh, a few other things here. Uh, so, like growing neural networks, that's a kind of algorithm that uh, Bernd Fritzke has developed, uh, where 
the you start with a relatively small number of reference vectors, or actually you start with one reference vector, and then you add new reference vectors, and you add them always at the locations where there's sort of the most error, so they add, add them at, at those locations where they're uh, most valuable to include new reference vectors. So that's a very interesting and, and powerful algorithm, further development. Yeah, towards a neural implementation, uh, I mean, if you want to use this just for uh, as a machine learning tool, then you would be done here at this point, or actually you would have to look at growing neural networks and these kinds of things. Uh, but if you uh, want to use this more in a computational neuroscience uh, context, then you may wonder, okay, how could these mechanisms be implemented um, in a neural fashion? And there are <coughs> sort of two things that might be implausible, calculating the Euclidean distance between two points or the reference vector and the data point might be something strange to do in a neural, neural system, but what you can notice is that if you look at the Euclidean distance or the squared Euclidean distance here, uh, you can calculate it this way if you multiply it out, right? Okay, so that may be a bit too, f too, too fast. Um, <coughs> okay, so you can write the squared norm of the distance between two vectors, of the difference between two vectors, also as an inner product of x minus r transpose times x minus r. Yeah. <coughs> And if you multiply that out, you, out you get um, x by x, which would be the norm of x squared. You get x by r two times, which is this minus two times x uh, times r, and you get the r by r. So this is this part. And if you now assume that r is normalized, this would be one. Oh, the both vectors are actually normalized. This would be one, this would be one, and then you have uh, only this as a variable term. So this boils down then to two times one minus x times r. Now in a neural context, r would be the weight vector of, an, of a neuron, so the synaptic weights, and x would be the input. And if you somehow manage to have normalized activities in a neural network so that x is normalized, and you have normalized weights, which is a very common assumption, then um, you have then this is valid what we did here, and calculating the inner product is exactly the prescription that you would use in order to simulate an artificial neuron, so the input activities times the weights. So it's not so far fetched to assume that this could be implemented in, in, in neural tissue. <clears throat> okay, the other thing is this hard competitive uh, aspect, namely that you have to pick out one winner, the one reference vector that's uh, closest to the data vector, and if you calculate uh, the distance in this way, then the reference vector with the largest inner product with well, the input actually has the smallest distance, right? So this is shown here. It's also important. So the reference vector with the largest inner product is the one with the smallest Euclidean distance. So that means that the neuron which is most activated by the input is actually the one that has a weight vector r that is closest to the input vector x. And then all you need to do is you have to apply a winner-take-all mechanism. So that is something um, uh, that is something well known in, in, in neural network uh, theory, uh, that if you have a number of neurons and then uh, they, are, they inhibit each other, so maybe I can draw you a little figure for that.
So you can imagine if you have one two well first one was not nice one two three units and they have inhibitory and I draw the inhibitory connections blue they have inhibitory connections to each other <clears throat> and maybe if you want you might also have self-acceptation and if they now get input right so they they, they all get input and the input is the input is x and the weights um, so this I draw now just one line but it's actually the full vector that gets transmitted to the neurons right um, yeah so then they get activated to different degrees and through the self-excitation they try to sort of then excite themselves and get sort of to full activity but at the same time they mutually inhibit each other and then the neuron that gets the best head start uh, um, so gets most support here from this X would win and get most activated so this would be a winner take all mechanism and that way you can activate one neuron to then learn the input pattern there's also a version called K winner take all yeah. um, so we have a winner take all mechanism and there also exists a K winner take all version um, which would do this soft um, competitive learning. And finally, let me point you to the whole theory, adaptive resonance theory, uh, developed by Stephen Grossberg, which is a complete neural implementation of a vector quantization algorithm. Okay. So here this is a nice uh, uh, demo um, written by Bernd Fritzke and colleagues where you can play with these different algorithms and see how they behave. <laughs>